Hey, Shalom. First off, I want to start up saying all praises, honor, and glory is due unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakadash. That's all praises who the world calls God, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh by Hashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai being the name of the only begotten Son. Also, want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the hopeful elect preaching this word in truth and sincerity on the brother Tazaba and the Great Millstone Arizona camp. Lord, well, with another video to edify, and um, I wanted to go on in this, uh, you know, stuff with Fopi and uh, who, uh, you know, Fopi and his other dude here. Now, the elder out of uh, Elder Yashawamba in Dallas, you know, already hit this lesson on the head, but I just want to put a little two cents in there, you know, and and basically. <coughs> So like you getting over some stuff um but basically you know these men popped back up on the scene after being gone for for what uh what the elder said in the video for about two weeks sitting there saying they did, dude was dealing with depression uh uh you know, he, he had thoughts of committing suicide, mental health problems. And um, using that as a reason and excuse. And his walk of ours being men, you know, that's unacceptable. It's really unacceptable, man. When you really think about it, any excuse you can come up with as to why you didn't do something that was commanded by the Heavenly Father, none of it's acceptable. You know, especially going two weeks without uh, tending to the flock. Unacceptable, man. Right? And these men, uh, because it was their custom already to to dip out and and, and uh, it was already their custom to dip out and do their own thing for a while and come back. As the title in the video, within this video says... Fopi, we back, Israel, open discussion, right? What do you mean you back? Right? The Lord didn't take breaks and neither should you. Right? The scriptures tell you, let me get some precepts, man. This is um, Isaiah 53 and 3. It says, he is despised and rejected of men, a, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as, our, as it were our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And this is talking about Yahweh Shai. So this is a man. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, but this dude's got the mindset to sit here and complain about having family issues, right? About getting depression. Hey, the the, the scriptures tell you. Let me get this. This is um first Peter's five and and in and, and eight. Oh sorry, seven. It says cast casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. You see, that's that's what you're supposed to do when things get tough, man. You're supposed to cast your care upon who? The Lord. Not 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 go about and handle the shit in a way that you think is right and, and, and leave the Lord's business un, 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 unattended to. Right? This is verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil has a roaring lion walking about, seeking how he may whom he may devour, whom whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Right? So if you get in those depression demons. 
right? If you get in that woe, because that's really what it is. That wanting to commit suicide and shit. That's just a, that's that woe is me demon, man. Because ultimately, when you think about it, there's a brother on your same level. <clears throat> catching the same amount of hell. Catching the same amount of hell that you're going through. Going through the exact things that you're going through. And he ain't giving up. But when you get to that point to where now you start thinking about taking your own life and shit is because you start thinking that your hell is above somebody else's and that nobody's catching it like you, man. And that's a bad place to be. But <clears throat> the real issue of this matter is you didn't apply the scriptures and you thought your hell was so great that you could justify a hiatus from from doing what the Lord commanded, man. And that ain't right, man. That ain't right. It's this. The fact that this lesson came out. ITR. The fact that this lesson came out, man, and these men make these statements like this, this is, this is showing you uh, uh, who the true man of the Lord, man, because a, a true man of the Lord, when you went to go into Yahweh Shai, Apostle Paul, Peter, right? Uh, 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 none of them, none of them took breaks. They was in it for the long haul, right? Paul told you, hey, what shall separate us from the love of the most high? Shall tribulation, persecutions, right? Nothing. Nothing would separate a true man of the Lord from the work. Right? Death is the only thing that separated. And even then the works follow. Right? But this is um Romans 12. <clears throat> Romans 12. And one, hey, there's brothers within the in, in, within the body that that uh, got crippling PTSD from being in Esau's military and shit, man. I remember uh, one of the brothers uh, from Chicago, I believe he's from Chicago camp. Uh, they did a video and, and he was going into uh, our brothers prayed on him over him. And and, and the the PT PTSD symptoms, man, they just they just basically faded away to now that brother ain't dealing with it like that anymore. Right? So you talking about depression, anxiety, ain't an excuse, man. All of us got depression, man. We in captivity. We in hell. We men, everybody depend on us, especially when you become a man in this truth. Because you understand how to move. And you don't walk reckless. So people see that and they just gravitate to you for help. Right. This is uh, Romans 12 and one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the most high, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the most high, which is your reasonable service, man. That's your reasonable service. So when you go into a, a, a sacrifice, that sacrifice doesn't get to choose when it's going to get uh, put put to the fire. You just got to go through it. You're not going to be able to pick those moments, man. Hell is going to come. Our duty is to is to is to uh, perfect the way in the spirit to weather that storm, man. And it's, it's, it's hard, bro. That's the fucking battle. That's the battle, man. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, here it is. Second is a seven and in, in, in this is a uh, second is a seven and fifty six. It says for while we lived and committed iniquity, we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death, right? So we're paying for the sins of our, own, our past life, sins before we came into the truth. Hey, you're going to catch it. And it's all right. Because you deserve it, man. I deserve the hell I go through. Everybody that goes through whatever hell you go through, you deserve it. It's all right. It says, then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon earth shall fight. That if he overcome. That if he be overcome, 
he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive receive the thing that I say. So what what is the victory for overcoming? A crown of life. You gotta you gotta fight for that count crown of life, man. Don't don't make excuses for why you didn't fight that day, man. Don't make excuses why you ain't take why you ain't picked up the sword in a week. That ain't right, man. This is 2 Timothy 2. Hey, and these are these are the things that I'm putting in my mind as well, man. Don't don't think I'm speaking these words and this ain't this ain't things that I'm taking in consideration, bro. Hey man, when brothers gave me my name in the Hebrew, Tazabah, hey, that man, a host, a soldier, man. I a soldier's duty is what? To fulfill his mission. It don't matter how I feel. It don't have, matter what I think at the moment. I know damn well I got to fulfill the mission. And, and, and brothers, when you get your names in this thing, you fulfill that in a righteous lot. And you're going to have to go through hell to make sure you fulfill that, man, but fulfill it. Say, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 2 and, and um, 3, it says, Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of, of Yahweh Shai and Mashiach. No man that wars entangled himself with the affairs of this life. You see, you got to endure that shit, man. Don't sit here and walk around and mope. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts, bro. It fucking hurts. But walking around and moping ain't going to help you. You taking two weeks to mope ain't going to help you. Because in that same time where you took that two weeks off and then you came back and you felt like you was ready to come back and now you're ready to do the thing. You could have stayed. You could have stayed in it the whole time. And it probably you probably would have got sucked out of that moping ass spirit a lot sooner. There's nothing like having your mind occupied in the word of the heavenly father to get you out of some shit man it says it says no man that war entangle himself with the affairs of this life and that's what happens when you start entangling yourself too much it shit starts wearing on you far too it's far too great and that's exactly what these dudes do man. they entangle themselves with this, the affairs of this life to where they they can make excuses of, of why they're not serving the Lord like they know they should be. Why they got to make a video that's saying, Fopi, we back. Israel, open discussion. It, that's why. Right? But what about the flock, man? It says um, that he may please him whom had chosen him to be a soldier. You see? You got to, you got to, you got to, you can't get entangled with the affairs of this life because it's going to cause you not to please the Lord that called you to be a soldier. If a soldier sit here and goes out to war and starts worrying about his woman at home and says, you know, I got to go make sure she got what she need. You going to leave the whole platoon? Without without somebody that's handling the artillery, no. That's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, man. This is um second Ezra 14. Second Ezra 14 and 14, it says, Let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of men, put off now the weak nature. And that's exactly what it is, man. It, you you like I said, man, and you can watch this video. The TR. Plays the opportune part, right? Dude said he was going through depression, you know? As a man, he's going through shit. Yeah, we is are like, man, we're fucked up, bro. Our situations are fucked up, bro. And if you don't like how I'm speaking, I got to speak candidly because this, man, I, I, when I see the things that brothers go through on, on my side, and I see this shit, this weak ass shit, and, and it promotes a weak ass mindset to where now anybody else that sees this will justify it, will feel justified in them taking breaks and choosing when to put on righteousness or not. Hey, man, it's, it's a bad look, bro. It's a bad look. I don't like it. 
I don't like that shit, man. Second answer is 14 and 14. Let, uh, let go from me. Mortal thoughts cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to flee from these times. You see? So if something's getting on your mind so heavy that you feel like you got to commit suicide, cast that burden on the Lord, man. Remember the scriptures. You got a kingdom to get to. Right? The Lord, the Lord will pan everything else out. You can't take whole weeks, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two month breaks and think that you're still in the truth. That's not right, man. The scriptures talk about proving yourself, knowing you're not your own self. Right? Second answer is eight and five. It says, um, start at four. It says, so I answered and said, swallow then down. Oh, my soul, understanding and devour wisdom, right? This is what all brothers have done in this truth. When you've, when you come into this thing, this is, this is your mindset, man. You want to know it all. You want to get to under, you want to get the understanding of the scriptures. You want to, you want to be able to pull out the precepts whenever you want to pull it out. You take your notes, you, you get into it, you're in the right spirit. Now this is this is what this is what it is. Fifth verse it says, "For thou hast agreed to give ear and are willing to prophesy, for thou hast no longer space than only to live." You see, when you come into this thing, you don't have a space just to live and do your own will. So you, at a drop of a dime, you you can't make the decision to take two weeks off, to take a week off, take four days off. You can't do that, man. Even if you take, you know, you know, a one day here and there, you know, just to, uh, you know, chill out, you know, you'll still revert back to the scriptures within that time. Revert back to the work within that time. A lesson is still sparking your mind. You got to be locked into the spirit. Right. You don't have time only to live. The Lord said, what? Let me get this, man. Luke uh, 21 and 16. He answered and said unto him the second time, a Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. That's a serious job, man. You've been given a, a, a position to feed the sheep of the Lord, man. Right? To feed the sheep of the Lord. You've been given that lot. You're no longer just doing your own thing. And when you feed sheep, you got to understand the scriptures in the old time. And I and I looked for this too before I did this lesson. It says Genesis 31 and 38 to prove this point. When you fed sheep and you were feeding somebody else's sheep and taking care of them, if something happened, you were le held liable. Right, so this is well, this is our forefather, man. Right, this is uh Jacob when he was working for Laban, man. It says, uh, "This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy she goats have <coughs> not cast their young, the rams of the flock <coughs> have I not eaten." It says, um, that which was torn of beasts, I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it and my hand. Uh, it says of my hand, didst thou require it. See of his hand, if something was lost and torn and separated, it was required at that man's hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Right. Thus was I in the day. Well, thus was I in the day, the Salakia. So thus was I, thus was I in uh, the day the the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. You see, that's hey, it's a hard thing to serve. 
It's hard, a hard thing to be a shepherd, man. You got to be always on point, always on lock. And making excuses on, 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 on and, and justifying it. That ain't right, man. That ain't right, man. You know, brothers, keep it in mind, man. You got to you got to do this thing to the death. Count the cost, as the scriptures say, man. But don't sit here and fold up because things are getting hard and justify you not doing what you know you should be. You know, so Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm going to say, call law, y'all, by Shimei, by Shimei, Karkadash, Shalom.